Hello, everyone. I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with this ABC News Digital Special Report. A very special Monday. The Duchess of Cambridge in labor. Kate was secretly admitted to St. Mary's Hospital in London early this morning with Prince William by her side. Arriving by car with no police escort. And ABC's Nick Schifrin joins us now from a very excited London with the latest on the Royal Baby Watch. Nick, I know for weeks now we have been waiting for this moment. Dan, there's nothing like that music that you that you launch right at the top of the broadcast just to really get me excited into the royal baby mood. And it is a very excited city. We have been waited for weeks. Uh, and right now, we're still waiting. Uh, there's hundreds of reporters outside St. Mary's Hospital where Kate is inside uh, in labor. Uh, there's hundreds and perhaps thousands of people now at Buckingham Palace waiting for the official announcement that will be taken by police, a single piece of paper by police from the hospital to the palace. So the city anxiously awaits uh, this next royal baby who'll be third in line to the throne. Nick, the interesting thing is obviously we have been keeping an eye on the hospital for days now, for weeks, and yet it seems as if they almost slipped in undetected. Slipped in through the side door, literally, uh, at about 6 a.m. or so. Uh, two cars, we believe, one Range Rover and one security vehicle, took Kate and William into the side entrance, only about two or 300 feet, but crucially around the corner from where the ladder city is, where the series of ladders and tripods are set up 24 hours a day to watch the front entrance. So they went through the side entrance right after 6 a.m. They made sure that Kate was comfortable, the doctor saw her, and then the palace emailed an announcement uh, about an hour, an hour and a half later saying, oh, haha, ha, fooled you guys. She's in the hospital. And guess what? Nobody actually got a picture or video of her entering the hospital. I have a sense that we are going to have a few more of those aha moments in the next couple of hours or days, however long it may possibly take. Because, you know, as we've been talking so much, times have obviously changed since the last heir to the throne has been born. Obviously, digital media, a lot of social networking has evolved and taken place and been created over the time. So the announcement itself will certainly have a lot of theatrics and a lot of new developments that have never happened before. Walk me through a little bit about then when we will find out when the baby is born. So, so Kate and William are really considered the House of Windsor's most modern couple, and they've used Facebook, they've used Twitter, the palace has used social media to get out the message. But Kate and William were very clear that they wanted to have a nod to the historical precedence of this moment. And so they're going back to a tradition that was started about 31, 32 years ago when William, the father, was born. What will happen is that Kate will give birth, and at some point, one of her or his, William's, press secretaries will walk out of the hospital with a piece of paper. It'll be on Buckingham palace letterhead and on that piece of paper will be the doctor's signatures uh, and they'll say yes we were there when Kate gave birth at this time uh, that piece of paper will be put into a waiting car and be given a police escort back to Buckingham Palace at that point the gates open the paper goes into the palace they take out an easel that hasn't been taken out since William for 31 years they take out that easel bring it into the forecourt of Buckingham Palace and put the piece of paper out and that is the official announcement for the royal Royal baby, and that announcement will probably have the weight, uh, uh, probably not a name, uh, but it will say something. The first indication we got of William's personality was on that paper. It said he was a baby who cried lustily, uh, and maybe <laughs> something like that uh, will be described for this new baby, and that's when the world will know that we have a royal heir. It is fascinating to find out those first couple of words and comments that the family will make, obviously, when the announcement is made. I read that Queen Elizabeth had said when Prince William was born that she was happy that, in fact, he did not inherit his father's ears. A little bit of personality coming from Buckingham Palace and the royal family. And it's interesting that, yes, in fact, that, that, that William was not named a week after, but we're going to be focusing so intently on those gates of the palace doors to find out exactly the sex, the weight, and the time of the birth. And also, you're looking at here at the pictures. Uh, this is when Prince William was born, when the late Princess Diana and Prince Charles came out, proudly showing off their new bundle of joy and that nick that was a historic moment because until that point a photographer used to be brought into buckingham palace to capture those initial moments 
That was historic for a few reasons. One, everybody before William was born in Buckingham Palace. Uh, and so for the first time, you had an heir to the throne born in the hospital. For the first time, also, you had the father by the mother's bedside. I mean, think about that. When William was born, sorry, when Charles was born, his father, Philip, was out playing polo. Uh, and so Charles <laughs> I at love least that story. sat by Diana's side. And William now is sitting by Kate's side. They will come out together at some point. We don't know how long the labor will take, nor do we know how long they'll wait before they come out. But they'll come out, and it is a change day. They're not going to come out to four or five or six cameras, uh, and the British media being very respectful. They're coming out to a hundred cameras, and countries, uh, uh, reporters from all over the world. I was speaking to some Japanese reporters, some from Northern Europe, some Australian reporters. I mean, everyone is interested uh, in this baby, uh, and there'll be a huge huge amount of scrutiny uh, on not only the baby, but also Kate. And Kate will become kind of the world's most, mu most watched mother rather than the world's most watched expectant mother. Nick, I want you to stay with us for a moment because I want to go over to journalist and author Mark Elwood, who is a royal expert. And Mark, I want to ask you about this. The fact of the matter is there is a lot of protocol and there's a lot of pomp and history that goes into the announcement of an heir to the throne, as it doesn't happen very often. Will the Middletons, Kate's family, will they be notified the same time that we know of at the Queen? That's a very good question. I think, I, how do I put this? I think William and Kate are very modern monarchs to be. And I'm very sure that Kate, who's so close to her mother, will find a way to call her mom. I suspect there'll be a cell phone sort of under the bed and she'll be calling her mom. The protocol dictates that the Queen will be told first, of course, but I'm sure they'll find a way that Carol uh, will be right there. Interesting. It's an interesting image. I don't know exactly how she's going to be able to sneak a cell phone under the bed, but if they can get into the hospital without too many people capturing pictures, I suppose anything is possible. Talk to me a little bit about the significance of this child's birth, because as we've been talking about the fact that this child, boy or girl, will be the next heir to the throne. It, which is, is kind of jaw-dropping when you think about it. This person who's about to appear in the future will be a global icon. This baby is guaranteed to be a global icon. And there are very, very few babies who are born with that kind of future guaranteed. What really interests me is how they change the law, this whole law of succession, where for a long, 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 long time, it didn't matter if you had seven daughters and one son, he would leapfrog the line and become king. If William and Kate have a, a little girl, will she get left out that way? No, they've changed the law. So it guarantees that this baby, for the first time ever, will be the monarch of the UK. I get quite, I get quite verklempt thinking about it. <laughs> it. Well, it is, it is certainly historical and certainly it shows, you know, the Queen has certainly uh, gotten a lot of credit for advancing with the times and, and changing. And, uh, you know, as you and I have discussed before, there is a lot of tradition that mm -hmm. steeps very deeply in the royal family. But at the same time, though, the Queen has said that this was something that she was very passionate about, about making changes to that. Because she herself, obviously, was an unlikely heir to the throne. She didn't come, uh, didn't become heir apparent until... Uh, she was 12, 13 years old uh, when her uncle had abdicated. I mean, I think so many people have seen the King's Speech where you watched not only her father get thrust unexpectedly to be the monarch, but this, this little girl who was really a posh, well-behaved, nice little girl. She was a spare. Who knew if maybe they might need her as an emergency queen? And all of a sudden, she got this incredible weight forced upon her, which I personally, I think she's done a brilliant job handling. This child will be brought up from day one knowing that he or she will be the monarch of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth, remember. There are 16 other countries over which they ha this, this person will have technical dominion. No Excuse pressure. Me. No That's, pressure. I mean, <laughs> Nick, I, I want to go back to you for a moment, Nick, in, in London. What's the scene outside of Buckingham Palace? I imagine crowds are gathering. Yep, we got hundreds of people right as the announcement uh, came out publicly around 8 a.m. or so. Uh, a few hours later, uh, it's now about uh, 2 p.m. or so here, and there's now thousands of people. We saw uh, some bands outside practicing, so I think there's a lot of expectation, uh, a lot of anticipation. Uh, and, and as you guys were saying, uh, I think a lot of that is British. I mean, we've heard uh, lots of interesting facts today about how there'll be uh, 3 million bottles of champagne purchased in this country alone, so we'll get a pretty 
happy country tonight or tomorrow night whenever we get this baby. But a lot of those people outside Buckingham Palace are tourists. There's a huge amount of interest, uh, whether American or whether European uh, or from uh, all over the world uh, in this baby. And that announcement that will come whenever it comes uh, in that traditional form of that letter posted to the palace gates. Mm, Nick Schiffer, and we know, of course, you're going to keep your eye posted on those gates, as is the rest of the world. And Mark Elwood, we know that you're going to be hanging with us today throughout the next couple of hours, maybe the next couple of days. Who knows? Of course, it will be when the baby is good and ready, as they say. And as you're looking at the outside of St. Mary's Hospital, inside the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate is in labor as she was admitted early this morning, almost in total secrecy, being admitted to the hospital. And now the world waits for the next heir to the British throne. We have a complete report on abcnews.com. And of course, as developments occur, we will have them right here. For now, I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with this ABC News digital special report. Thank you.